sometimes I stay up late at night and I'm just like, wait a second, electricity, electrons moving from one thing to another to power it. How does that even work? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just picturing you like lying in bed like on top of the covers like staring <laughs> at the ceiling <laughs> your eyes bugged out being like electricity i must know User beams. Help you, Mary. welcome back listeners to alphanumeric a reboot podcast where myself and two of my co-hosts talk about every single episode of reboot the 90s cartoon in broadcast order um my name is neo cal and my co-hosts are i am another host aiden snyder and i am yet another host christopher siege Christopher Siege and Aiden, how are you this fine Friday, Thursday? It's one of those days. I think it's Friday, and I'm doing okay. I think it's Sunday, actually, because that's the day this episode will go live. <laughs> he saw through the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of this episode, on this week's episode of Alphanumeric, we are reviewing the fourth episode uh, of reboot medusa bug it originally aired on october 8th 1994 back in the day when we uh had to pump water out of the ground and rode horses i was the only child on my block with a tv set whoa look at you mr yeah. fancy pants yeah, we, got, you know. we, we, we got a badass over here <laughs> <laughs> all right so to 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 jump into this a little bit uh, we're, we start this episode with a whole bunch of windows and the windows tell us that dot is doing a business. <laughs> <laughs> Serious business. Even I like the little vid window that has like all the different colored reboot icons on it. Yeah. Yeah. There's also one that says new product and it shows a zero and a one binome wearing a wig that looks like Bob's hair. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys notice that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then there's like an abacus. And oh, yeah, the, the little, all the different icons. Cool. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. And uh, yeah, so Dot's doing a business. She puts down her glasses. I don't recall her having glasses, but. In this episode, she certainly does. Uh, so her dipshit little brother, Enzo, comes barging in. And apparently him and Bob are waiting for Dot to go do a thing. And Dot's all like, oh no, I got all this serious business to attend to. And Enzo's basically like, you gotta relax. And she's like, okay. So they go out to uh, car, uh, Bob's car, which is this like hover car Cadillac. It's rad. Yeah, it's, it's the first it's, time we've seen it in this show. It's the first time he's had it running in a very long time, apparently. Yeah. yeah. Dot is like, I, I, Which I, I can't can relate believe to. it. <laughs> Bob, your car is actually running? Yeah. It just could explain why exactly we have like an old car that, that's barely running. <laughs> <laughs> and then it kind of coughs and almost dies. And he does the classic, you know, smack, smack on the dashboard and then it starts up again. That's how technology works. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Even inside a computer. <laughs> they end up having to drag Dot out of the diner because she immediately sneaks off and d wants to do more business. She's got to, she's got to finish up the Mitchell account. Yeah. They drag yeah. her ass out of there. Literally drag her ass out yeah. of there. <laughs> they throw her into the back seat of the car. Yeah. So she's all business and, and no play. So yeah. off they go to do, to, to, to do some fun. I to guess, do, I guess a do. night, a day on the town. I don't know. Fun things. Uh, yeah. And then we cut to Lost Angles, uh, and Megabyte's, Megabyte yeah. Mega Limo is driving away. It is a Mega Limo. Holy <laughs> wow, that is rad looking. It's huge. Yep. Uh, so Hack and or Slash are chilling out with a uh, viral Nazi. <laughs> and the... Uh, uh, the the window to the mega limo opens up. Megabytes in the back, and he's basically like, "After all this time, we finally have Hex's secret weapon, the Medusa." 
<laughs> Which, a box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, a little like thing, and the POV makes it seem like there's a it's creature alive. inside. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like fly vision. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> so who knows how they stole it, but but oh. they did. And there's an earthquake, I think. Yeah. I think there's and, like an explosion. Yeah, and, and hexadecimal flies out, of, out of, the of the ground. Yeah. yeah. Megabyte! No. In a hexadecimal voice that I cannot do. That was pretty good. I'll give that. I'm, so I'm, not, an, I'm not an old woman, so, you know. <laughs> How yeah, dare you? She's mature. <laughs> <laughs> so she uh, is pissed and starts flying toward Megabyte, like pointing at him and be like, you, you lie, you lie. I was a fool to trust you. It makes it seem like they just hooked up and he swiped this from her desk. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. is weird, because... Con- considering what we know about them, what we find out about them later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, like, they hate each other, but a virus has got to get laid. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so Megabyte stole that thing from that Medusa box from uh, Hexadecimal's box. Hmm. She she summons something in God. her rage. Yeah. Oh, I just got it. Ha, yeah. ha. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, so she she summons. What are those? Are those nulls? Yeah, they're nulls. Yeah, it's like yeah. a tidal wave of nulls. And My, hack, I, I hack and or slash uh, counter this by uh, just breaking a piece off of the bridge. <laughs> that looks yeah. so wonky. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> just pick up the middle of the bridge and drop it off in its entirety. Like it, like like Aiden had said last episode, like you know they're good for one thing, and that's muscle. Literally one thing, yeah. Are those like viral nulls, like an ocean of red and black nulls? Yeah. I don't know. I think they're just ex-humans or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, speaking of nulls, real quick, um, my partner is a programmer. And she actually informed me, um, you know how Megabyte's pet null is called mm-hmm. Nibble? Yep. Yeah. Well, you know that there's eight bits in a byte? Yep. Yep. Apparently a Nibble is half a byte. It's four bits. <laughs> oh, that's wow. funny. Wow. That is pretty yep. funny. And yeah. there's two Nibbles in a byte. Huh. I, I didn't know that. I thought it was, it was cool. Computer mm. knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. So there's knowledge some... is power. <laughs> That's right. Knowing is half the battle. And there's what? How many bits in a megabyte? Eight million? I think it's yeah. eight million, yeah. yeah. One one hundred billion <laughs> dollars. A, <laughs> a lot of a lot of nulls. Yeah. So yeah, hexadecimal kind of like faces off against the megabytes <clears throat> like Nazi <laughs> Nazi army. Yeah. He's vest he's he's Dressed very Hugo Boss, I must say. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> which which they would be, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I you guys probably already know, but uh, Hugo Boss was the the designer who designed the Nazi uniforms. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> and uh, they have tanks, and we finally get to see the tanks do something on the show. And boy, do they do something! They yeah, they got, unleash like, a the arsenal. barrage of missiles and lasers at Hexadecimal. <laughs> to, to which she just kind of shields off with very little effort. Yeah, she's got an mm-hmm. energy shield. That seems to be very effective against, uh, you know, every metal. <laughs> and a, a waste of ammo. Um, yeah, yeah, they've been waiting a long time to, to shoot those. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, the, the the guy the uh, the um, uh, viral Nazi general with his like riding crop has just been ready to give the order. <laughs> to fire. He's got like a little riding crop. He does something have a riding crop, yeah. <laughs> something that you'd like smack like a map with or move around little figurines on a tactical board, <clears throat> or or your horse. sub, you know, yeah. or <laughs> that. <laughs> How dare you make sexual? Jokes about reboot. This is this is a different podcast now. Uh, <laughs> right. How dare how dare we talk about reboot characters in a sexual manner? 
Yeah, you, know, you, you never like we've done for the past three uh, episodes. You know, it's not like I ever had a crush on on uh, on any of the characters or anything. My God! All right, yeah. I know <laughs> Megabyte is a sexy beast. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's a naked robot thing. Speaking of naked robot thing, he's in his lair by himself, being like, uh, so pleased with himself. Ah, yeah, no. Yeah, and he's and talking he's... to his uh, his uh, Nazi general on on a vid window. I I think is... his I think his name is Lieutenant Chauncey. <laughs> if it's I not, do. it is now. It is now. But I I, I used to I, <laughs> sorry I, I I used to collect ro- uh, sorry robot card, reboot <laughs> cards back in the day, and I still have a couple. And there was oh, one. Jesus Christ. <laughs> there was one where he's on it, and that was the name at the bottom of the card, Lieutenant Nazi. <laughs> and I was just like, "This." I had no idea he even had a name. Kill Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, very quick sidebar. What's especially funny about that is uh, my partner calls our cat as a nickname Chauncey sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Yes, actually. That's awesome. <laughs> Lieutenant Chauncey now. <laughs> yep. I'm going to have brilliant. to tell her about that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, Lieutenant Chauncey is giving uh, uh, Mega Breath a, uh, a, um, uh, a status report, and he's like, oh, Hexadecimal said something about being bored, and she just disappeared. Perimeter yeah. secured. Yeah, she didn't kill them all. She got bored just, halfway. Reporting all this from a gigantic crater. <laughs> with like with like two tanks at the back just smashed up. But hey, perimeter is secured, so you yeah, know, yeah. Hey, you know, cool. A plus job, at, guys. At any cost, you know. And again, I run into this problem a lot on this particular show. Sometimes Megabyte seems very intelligent, and then other times he is the stupidest character on the show. Like yeah. right now. He's literally to himself shit talking hexadecimal. Oh, it's a shame that she's so stupid. She let me steal this. She thought she could hide her secrets from me, the superior naked virus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and right? like the shit lord he is, he just opens it. Yeah. And when he opens it, he is so surprised. But like he has no idea what it is. No. And then yeah. he screams as it um his hand it's starts like, petrifying. No. And he says, No, this is a no. weapon. It's a viral bug. What yeah, the fuck what did I you think like it to, was? What I would like to point out is just how childish this whole his whole scheme here was, because it's like he had no idea what the fuck this thing was. Yeah. He just see he simply wanted it because hexadecimal had it. That reminds me of like that is that so reminds childish. of my cousins and I when we were like twelve <laughs> and ten. <laughs> like you just want something because someone else has it oh, yeah. yeah and then he's like no this is a weapon it's a viral bug um she's a virus what what, what did you think it was dude <laughs> like, while while he's being infected in this very surprising manner he is looking up cures and identification oh, yeah. of this he's just like panicking and he's like Tell me everything about this. What is it? What is it? Help, yeah, you know. That, that's now suggest- he wants to know. Yeah. yeah. What? What? We should point out what it's actually doing. Um, yes. Because uh, yeah, yeah. It's I climbing mean, it should, up his arm. It should right? be pretty obvious, based like strict, based strictly on the fact that it's called Medusa. Yeah. But it what is. Do you mean, slow- Christopher? It is slowly turning him <laughs> into stone. <laughs> Starting from the hand that he opened the box. And, yeah, and it's and spreading it, up his body, slowly turning him into stone. Slowly, yeah. It's a, I guess because he's a virus. I don't know, but like he's oh, it's more dramatic that way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. And uh, I'll come back I guess to that in a moment. His computer, <laughs> his computer is partially voice activated because as he's like badgering on about possible cures and counteracting agents, the computer voice says file type unknown, and it's unable to help him. Anyone else wonder? Because, I mean, his body looks segmented. Why he didn't just, like, G.I. Joe rip his arm off? Like, can he can he pull his arms off? Because his arms are ball joints, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I thought that would have been cool. If he just ripped his arm off and he's like, tisk. Oh. And he just throws it into, like, a tear. Pro- pro- problem solved. Yeah. But no, we get a um, kind of red shot of 
hexadecimal with a yeah. vid window popping up to like gloat as he turns into stone. And after she finishes gloating, the this uh, Medusa virus that was spreading through Megabyte at a very slow rate waited just until she finished her little shit talk spiel, and then it just quickly spread it just everywhere. Finished it up. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, and it, just like it, completely it, uh, engulfs the the silicon tour like within seconds. I would assume that uh, Megabyte's red oh, eyes does. slowly slowly dimming would be like some kind of callback to Terminator and from 1984 Probably. where like his red eyes just went out, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, cuz it shows them like kind of dim as he's not moving. Yeah. And then it starts engulfing the entirety of mainframe around the silicon tour. Yeah. And then hexadecimal seemingly, I don't know if she's like joking or if she is as as insane as we've kind of suspected she is, but she st- seems to start doubting herself. She straight up is like, oh, to her little like floating scuzzy pet thingy. She's all like, oh, scuzzy, I, I do wonder if infecting uh, mainframe with this bug was the right thing to do. But then yeah, she starts laughing at it. She's like, I'm not sure. But then her little floating like lamp like casts a shadow <laughs> in her layer against I like how she has lighting just to cast spooky shadows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And she cackles her her butt off. Yeah, she's she's not okay. <laughs> Speaking of butts, we cut over to a yeah. grassy field. A very low, low resolution texture grassy field. Stretch like circuit out. board, yeah. Uh, and there's a picnic going on, and Dot is wearing some pretty sweet uh, uh, Shade. Aussie shades. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I used to uh, rock shades like that when I was younger. Nice. Um, I could see it. Uh, so she's uh, lying on a blanket on <laughs> uh, this low res grass. And on I gotta s- say, something snow about. No leopard print. Something oh. about the shades and like her pose here, like it's doing it for you, kinda. I, and Dot kinda doesn't does normally it for me too. <laughs> she doesn't normally do anything for me, but well, here, like, there's something <laughs> kind of sexy about her. But I guess for some people, there's Dot, and for the weird people like me, there's hexadecimal. So there's a little something <laughs> for everyone. And then for literally everyone else, eventually there's grown up Andrea. Which we yeah. will cover. <laughs> what are you talking about, Christopher? It's, it's uh, I don't know. For. Uh, <laughs> I thought for everyone else, there's Bob. <laughs> That's Gr- grown up? Grown up? What's that? Um, Who's Andrea? Yeah. What is Andrea? Why Where? is Andrea? Where is yeah. Andrea? <laughs> How? What? Where are we? Oh, we for are, we are in mainframe. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're in mainframe, and apparently they've only just noticed this now. Like, all the whole road and buildings are being turned to stone, and that red and yellow dog, Frisket, is, like, running towards them. Being yeah. chased by this thing. The ground Mean- is slowly being turned to stone. Meanwhile, uh, while Dot is being all sexy on the lawn, uh, mm-hmm. Bob and Enzo are working on Bob's uh, bucket of bolts. Because... I like how they're they're not in a park. They're actually just like near the highway on like a patch of grass, and, and they're like, like literally I, like I right think... across the street from Dot's diner. Yeah, I think yeah. that's the joke. Is that like after all that, Bob finally gets his car running, and then it dies like when they're barely away from Dot's work, throwing distance uh, away from yeah. Dot's diner. So they're just like on this little like this little little island, you know, like we have um, the tiny little. Patches of grass in the city. Yeah. Yeah. It's sad. Yeah. So Enzo tries to run over to, his, presumably it's his dog, and Dot stops him and say, says, hey, we don't know what's going on yet. Well, we do know that Frisket is uh, his dog. We, we learned oh, yeah, that in the first do. episode. Um, specifically, hit. I always wondered where Dot and Enzo live, presumably together with, with Frisket. Yeah. In the diner? <laughs> yeah, we we saw Bob, we saw Bob's apartment and uh, and la- last episode we never saw did we have we seen Bob's apartment? yeah in the first episode first we haven't episode. seen yeah we haven't seen anybody else's apartment no so we've seen where the viruses live we've seen where Bob lives we have not seen Dot or Enzo's probably the rich dwelling 
Don't, don't, I feel like Dot's Diner is like her her feel good business, but like the way she makes money is actually like by being business partners with like all of Mainframe. Yeah, yeah. And that's just her passion project, her front, her business front. Yeah, that's where she launders everyone's money. Yeah. <laughs> It's a car wash, if you will. What is this show really teaching children? That viruses are sexy and uh, businesses are booming? (laughs) Yeah, that's that's another one. And Bob's Um, car doesn't work. Bob's car doesn't work. work. So so Dot and Enzo are in Bob's car trying to drive away, trying to get it started while this uh, Medusa bug stone uh, races toward them, turning everything into stone in its path. And Bob's like got his head under the hood of the car, like trying to get things going. And he's all like glitch ignition. I, I love that. He's like glitch ignition. And I'm like, couldn't you have asked Dot to, yeah. to turn it on? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she is in the driver's seat. So the oh, car I'm sorry, she's start. a woman. We need glitch to help him with this. <laughs> <laughs> Except like most of the people I know <laughs> that are good with cars are, are actually women. Right. I, I just think it's funny that Dot's right there. She can she can turn the ignition, and he makes glitch do it. I am perfectly fine with admitting that I am a dude who knows jack shit about cars, and my female partner knows way more about them than I do. Yeah. <laughs> hey. uh, I know just enough to not destroy my vehicle. <laughs> uh, so, the, uh, so the Medusa stone is... Uh, racing toward them car won't start and at this point when i'm watching the episode i'm like guys just get out your fucking zip boards fuck the yeah. car <laughs> can they just summon them like out of their out of the ether or do they have to have the zip boards with them well we we've seen that bob can summon his at the very least with glitch we bob saw can that summon his and, and enzo can like materialize his out of like a yo-yo thing on his side yeah, so right, presumably like they... Dot can do the same thing. So, like, guys, get out your fucking zip boards and get out of here to help the car. <laughs> That's less dramatic, apparently. Oh, but Dot driving the the Cadillac is actually really cool now. <laughs> is Dot actually the coolest character on the show? I, I think she might be. Remember, yeah. the, remember this was, like, mid-90s. This is, like, this is like a huge statement for, like... Um, uh, uh, un- entrepreneurial like women figures and kind of empowering uh, yeah like it had to have been some kind of you know uh, of course we didn't think of anything like it back then when we were kids but... no we just thought she she was a boss well that's that's my yeah. point like there is no agenda or anything she's just yeah like effortlessly the coolest character on the yeah, show. she's definitely the most put together character on this show Oh, for sure. Most put together and most capable. She's a workaholic and she schedules everything. And <laughs> like, look, look at last episode, the predicament that Bob's carelessness got her into. And like, she got herself out of Bob went on this whole, like pointless quest to save her. And ultimately she saved herself and then and, him. <laughs> and him. Yeah. And he didn't. Oh, and she saved him in the game <laughs> too. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, um, and if he had just listened to her, she was trying to stutter out that she was just going to send an order out with a vid window. <laughs> Rewatching that episode, so we could all talk about it, I noticed that she was basically saying that she can just make an order at any time. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. shush, shush. Me, let man do thing now. <laughs> <laughs> Me what? save you. Uh, you know, yeah, this, this is that. I think it was, you know, it was, it was, it was good intentions and everything because he genuinely couldn't understand her. But then again, he was basically turned into Indiana Jones in that episode, completely pointless. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the car finally starts, and they're able to speed away. And where do they go? The principal There's office. The principal office to talk to Fong. Fong. And thank. God, he doesn't make him play his stupid game again. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, can you like, imagine? Maybe, maybe like... he can't take on three people at once. Well, can you imagine? If... <laughs> That's like the only reason. It's literally the only reason he doesn't make them f- play fucking. He doesn't bomb. want. He doesn't want three people to womp him. Well, yeah. I, I like to imagine that he's like, "Oh, you must beat me in my game." And Bob's like, "Have you have you looked outside?" Yeah, we're like, we're all good? gonna die. 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> no, if you want access oh. to my boundless knowledge and infinite wisdom. <laughs> Fong, uh, one thing I actually want, speaking of Fong, one thing I wanted to point out is um, uh, our favorite listener, uh, Alakar Leorakar, actually commented on YouTube that Fong is named for uh, Fong shading, which is... Yeah, as he says, which is what they used for early CGI coloring and shading of objects. That is true. Yeah, oh, I didn't know I remember, that. I remember learning uh, yeah. that back. I never, I never even thought to bring that up. That's kind of funny. Yeah, uh, I always cool. just, I never thought about his name. That is cool. It's the same guy. Yeah, yeah, the, oh, the same cool. guy who uh, messaged me on Reddit. Yeah, I'm glad that he uh, he picked up on that. Yeah, God, we should have Hong him shading. on the podcast sometime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, why not? <laughs> Yeah, when one of us uh, has to be absent, we'll <laughs> get him on the show. Uh, interesting, while they're talking to Fong, he says to Bob, like, you might be immune to this Medusa virus because you're, you're a guardian. You're not from mainframe. Yeah. Which is interesting. Well, because he's from the supercomputer, he'd be immune to all these different unknown viruses that uh, small towns like mainframe wouldn't uh, have any, any, any clue about. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So presumably, uh, uh, the guardian icon uh, injects some sort of like antiviral code into <laughs> a guardian, or it's just this guardian presumably. special ability, and we're overthink <laughs> we're overthinking it. Maybe it's his hair. It's got to be the hair. <laughs> oh, I, just I want, I want sweet hair. I want I want silver dreadlocks. Yeah, I guess I, they are kind of in like little tendrils. They kind of are. I don't know. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. I like how they conclude that it's hexadecimal because of how chaotic it is. Yeah, it's completely random. Oh, you know, yeah. you know what Bob's hair reminds me of? Is it reminds me of like mid '90s, like grunge hair? Oh yeah, yes, the grunge movement. Yeah, all those uh, high school students with like beginner dreadlocks. What a time to be alive! <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good days. Have you said? <laughs> yeah, Ma- yeah. Watch a reboot. <laughs> <laughs> hiding weed from your dad i, I remember <laughs> yeah when i'm eight uh oh no we weren't quite old enough to hide weed from our dads at at this point <laughs> no. yeah, yeah. Our, dad, our dad found our weed when we were eight and then smoked it <laughs> <laughs> right in front of us <sighs> blue clouds in our faces <laughs> I'm just kidding. Joke's on you. My dad wasn't around. <laughs> same, same. I was going to say that, but I didn't want to dampen anything here. <laughs> like I wouldn't know, guys. Okay, so we're so we're yeah. all dabbling <laughs> so, kids. Then. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Hooray! With our yeah. powers combined. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my dad fucked off when I was like a couple weeks old. Oh. So. Woo. Oh, damn. That's yeah. a little little earlier than mine. Yeah, I didn't meet him for the first time until I was like ten. I met him. I met him in court, in oh. a child support hearing, and then he yeah. proceeded to deny on the stand right in front of me that he was my father, but also wouldn't uh, submit to a DNA test. And ten year old, he was like, "Fuck you too, man." <laughs> oh, I was crushed at the yeah, time. Yeah, I can imagine. But then the next time I saw him, when I was like eleven, he tried giving me his phone number, being like, "Hey, call me. We'll get together." And I was like, "No, fuck you, man." Oh my god, my dad does that too. It's been like twenty years, and you know, he still likes to send little reminders that he still exists, and so do I. <laughs> yeah, same with my dad. Yeah, that sucks, man. I'm sorry. No, it's it is what it is. I I yeah. mean, like for me, it's like he was never really there anyway, so I can't really, I can't really long for something that I have no context of. Mm. Right. Mm. Yeah, Whereas mine fucked off when I was eight, so I got oh. a taste of uh, what it was like. Yeah, and then just to have it ripped out from underneath me. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, hoping man. that when <laughs> I'm I'm hoping when he's on his deathbed, and then he wants me to come see him, and I will. But I'll dress up like uh, Principal Skinner. <laughs> I'll just like walk into like the hospital room, and I'll just say pathetic. And then walk away. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll go, I don't understand that meme. Son, come back. <laughs> Just walk in and be like, you disappoint me, Pterosaur. Cheers. 
just walk in. Hack slash. <laughs> oh man. That, they'll be like, oh yeah, that's why I don't talk to you. <laughs> wow. Anyways, that uh, my, a- my dad. One of the one of the other ways I found out about reboot when I was growing up is because my dad. I never actually mentioned this either because I didn't think to. Because why would I? Um, so my dad actually knew one of the producers behind the show. So I because he was in Vancouver. Oh and, uh, yeah, cool. So, yeah, so he and him were in touch. Anywho, yes. Any back to the back to the principal Let, office. Let's get back to the principal office. Does, does he know that you're? Uh doing a podcast about reboot no in fact i don't think he doesn't even know what podcasts are (laughs) yeah (laughs) no he 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 knows about uh other stuff that are important to him um Mm. supposedly um well well, okay to 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 jump back into uh the principal office (laughs) Fong has like a little display up yeah and he says that the medusa virus after petrifying things can disintegrate it. Yes, yes, and it moves from lower states of energy to higher. So, like nulls, and then binomes, and then eventually all the way up to sprites, um, yep. will start disintegrating. So, low energy objects will degrade first. Like, yes, it, it shows like a, a display of like signposts and things like that. Like little things, those will degrade first, but then eventually, like oh. binomes, sprites. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. The number five is in the middle. <laughs> uh, uh, so are a bun- uh, couple other characters from that from Al's diner from last episode. Actually, yeah, the, the eyeballs inside the jar. <laughs> yeah. So I guess sprites are are at the highest, and they're the last to go. Wow, Enzo refers to uh, megabyte as mega dump. <laughs> mega dump. So many mega mega jokes. I can't even keep them separate. Uh, so qu- pop quiz. Fong walks up to a wall, and there's a hidden area when he like puts his hands together in like Illuminati, and he says Greek action. That yeah, that made it's me his, laugh. His, his password. I love it. Um, I'm sure that there's Medusa. a reason for that. <laughs> is is that it? There's no other Greek no, action. Got, Doesn't mean anything. No, it's got to be. It's got to be that. Just because uh, Medusa is a Greek myth, mythology, mythological tale? Yeah. It's possible. Oh, okay. I thought yeah, maybe I mean, Greek action was like a computer term that we're missing or something like that. Listeners, uh-huh. if we're wrong about this, please <laughs> let us know. Feel free to weigh in. I like that Bob's like, okay, I'm going to need this, and I'm going to need desktop rebuilder and double dampener, wide field, 4K, ultra... And Fong just like looks HD. at him and shakes his <laughs> Tournament Edition Turbo. <laughs> X Tekken. <laughs> Capcom versus Marvel. <laughs> um, so he just shakes his head and he's like, uh, this is the best that we can do. And I remember this from when I was a kid. He like reaches up and double clicks on the vid window, like a, a file folder, and he pulls out like a pink eraser. Like like a, a school eraser. It says viral erase command. And he's oh, like, here yeah. you go. It's like wired up to something. Uh, it's That's just a pink eraser. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. And and Bob's like, R- really? You, you don't have anything better? It's an antique. We are not the supercomputer. Yeah, that, that makes... Man, I know those public school feels. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's we like, have well, three volleyballs and one of them leaks. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best we got. Yeah, it's uh, it's 2002, and all we have is like a Pentium 486. Uh, what are you gonna yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's my computer joke of the uh, of the episode. There you go. Yeah, and Bob says, "Well, maybe I can spruce it up with an attachment to to make it better." Yeah, yeah. he jury so, he jury rigs something. Something. Uh, we actually cut to the outside of the principal office. Where it shows thousands of oh. floating like aircraft and hover cars and stuff, um, as well as wheeled vehicles like coming in and dropping off like the masses as they're <clears throat> evacuating mainframe. It's really yeah. cool. Yeah, like, so everybody goes thousands. to hide in the principal office. Yeah. 
And we actually see a lot of like familiar figures we've seen here or there, like seven people from yeah the uh, alien seven. seven the xenomorph seven. There's there's a bus in it as well. I believe it's in this scene. Yep. Um, on, on, on the on the side it says you could be zipping. <laughs> a little transport slogan. You could be zipping. Interesting. Yeah. In other words, you know, use your freaking zip boards, guys. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. They've been a bit of a callback to the earlier, to the earlier you, bit. The more, the, the more environmentally friendly option. Also, just just look this up here. Um, um, in the archives, Bob asks Fong for desktop rebuilder. That's when he's offered the erase command. Desktop and uh, b- the desktop rebuilder is commonly used to rebuild, backup, and restore corrupt um, Macintosh operating systems. Oh, cool. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Little hidden things that, we, yeah, wow. Let's go right over my head. <laughs> well, you caught it. Yeah. I, I'm guess- just, oh, that means we're in a Mac. Uh, yeah, apparently. Well, and actually, that's uh, uh, that kind of makes sense because the uh, the reboot font. This is I know this, this is completely dumb, but the the reboot font. Um, I had to track down what the font was for when I make the show art because I always eat for this and our other podcast, Too Much Energy, on where we talk mm-hmm. about episodes of Beast Wars. Um, for the show art, I always use the font from whatever the the show is that we're covering. Yeah. yeah. So I had to find out what the font was in the reboot logo, and it is a font called Senator Thin, which is a originally oh, was a Mac font. Okay. Oh, sneaky. So yeah. you kind of you kind of knew. So yeah, it looks like they were using Macs to make this show. That makes a lot of sense. Huh. Listeners, we're learning things on the air as usual. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, and um, speaking of uh, zipping, though, mm. uh, Bob is on his zip board, and he flies off, and I actually sent you two gentlemen a screenshot of Bob g- grinning as he flies off, and he has this, like, con- glitch or something, built this contraption with a bunch of, like, spinner, like, almost like a lock or a countdown or something, something on it to enhance it. It looks like a bomb. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it looks yeah. like a bomb with a little vid window. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, away, and we uh, we cut to uh, uh, hexadecimal's lair, and she's watching on her little magic mirror thing. She's just watching over and over again, like a looping video of the silicon tour being <laughs> enveloped in stone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's loving this. She's just so satisfied that she just that she fucked over megabyte. Yeah. Yeah, she has some okay. some ups and downs in this scene. Uh, I have to go. I'm really sorry, guys, but uh, I do have to split. Duty call. All right. We'll catch All you right. next week. All right, so man. So long, Aiden. I'll talk to you all later. Bye. Bye. All right, Christopher. Do you like how technical Bob is with this <laughs> antivirus bomb? He just throws it at the ground. <laughs> he just chucks it at the ground. <laughs> I thought he was going to have to, like, like you know, find the place of origin or, you know, like, s- someone set us up the bomb. Oh, like, put it somewhere. There the, there you go. That's for our early 2000s podcast. We got uh, no. <laughs> he He chucks it, and there's, like, a reverse explosion? Like, there's a yellow explosion that engulfs part of mainframe, but we see the inside so, um, of it. And it's Wouldn't a reverse explosion just be an implosion. Yeah, what, I don't know how to describe what. What's <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, here. Just, I'm just bugging. No, I, I know exactly. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, it's it's exploding in a shell, but the camera gets to see inside of this big, of this big spherical like it, what looks to be an explosion, and on the inside of it, everything's turned back to normal. Yeah, but then it kind of. Like cuts to Hex, and she's like, "My poor Medusa," and the the sphere kind of struggles a bit, but then recedes, and it kind of goes out a bit, and then it just recedes and disappears. So it everything that it had turned back to normal, it's stone again. So it was all or nothing, I guess. Yeah.
and it it didn't work it had no effect it, as it recedes everything is stone again and hexadecimal says happy 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 yeah well i, I would assume that if it doesn't uh take out all of the bug then it doesn't like matter in one fell swoop then uh the bug will just spread immediately spread back to uh i don't know infect those yeah, areas again it has to get everything or or, or it, it doesn't, doesn't matter work. yeah 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 so hex wins this hex wins this round and then bob turns to the camera and he's like where's a gamecube when you need one which it's like what's a gamecube gonna do here <laughs> i mean presumably like does it stabilize the system like maybe? like would it fix this but what if they the bug would then infect the game and so you just end up with like a sector of mainframe with like a game a stone gamecube like permanently there does it affect en- energy? Hmm. Wait, that's a good... Or would it infect the inside of the game? Yeah. That's weird. But it, Bob is implying here that th- a game would help somehow. Yeah. Once and again, I... we, we are thinking about this more than the writers themselves. <laughs> but I, but my, even like when I had watched this the first time, my partner and I, I was like, hold up. can I usually don't care about that kind of thing i'm like oh that makes sense or oh whatever i actually want him to explain how that would (laughs) how that would help right now yeah but it's guardian guardian bs oh man i wish there was a game here right now and and we move on maybe in maybe there's some an episode that sheds some light on that but this is not the one yeah uh so we're uh bob comes back and we're inside the principal office and it's straight up been turned into a shelter. Yeah, like a refugee. Yeah, kind of refugee shelter. camp. Camp, um, yeah. And we see some uh some binomes, including our old pal Took guy. Oh yeah. Ro- roasting Took some marshmallows. Roasting some marshmallows at a campfire. Oh, yeah, like weird energy cubes. Yeah. And then it disappears. Like he, he's roasting it, and it he kind of looks surprised, as if he like overheated it or something. The equivalent, yeah. the the binome equivalent of like when your marshmallow lights on fire, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's like ah, damn. Yeah, there's a um, the guy from that's right beside him playing the harmonica. That's the guy that um did the badumps from uh Al's Oh. Diner. Oh, good yeah. catch! Yeah, I didn't with the fedora that. and the and the goatee <laughs> playing the harmonica. And so we see a family, uh, and the little baby. It's a it's a mom and a dad binome, and a little baby. And the little baby has a doll of uh, Bob. Oh yeah, it, it's definitely like like a, a Bob dolly. Oh, I didn't yeah. realize it shows kind of like a, a cafeteria line, like a a bunch of people waiting in line to get meatballs or food. And our seven, the Xenomorph seven is in there and he actually shoots his inner mouth out and like eats a meatball. <laughs> I, I just caught that. <laughs> oh, I missed that one. Yeah. He's on like the, the dinner line right before uh, it cuts to the family. I think it's really creepy that the dad in that little family, the, the binome family has yeah. a hexadecimal mask. Oh yeah, he scares his baby with it and the baby starts crying. And he's trying to make yeah, make the cheer up the baby or play with the baby and he like holds it in front of his single eye. And the baby's like horrified. And I'm like, dude, why would why would you do that? One, why do you have one of Hexadecimal's masks? <laughs> and two, why why would you do that? No baby thinks, you know what? A porcelain clown mask is great. I that's going to cheer me up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh it cuts to a little like vid window that dot is looking at of the infection and it's basically got all of mainframe except the the principal office for some reason it spread all the way around mainframe in like a circular pattern to wait to infect the principal office like giant orb blast mm-hmm. and they have energy shields up and stuff but i guess I guess that doesn't matter because the energy shield turns to stone and then like crumbles and breaks apart. Which uh, I guess just answers what you were wondering a couple of minutes ago. Uh, The bug uh, does 
spread to energy. Yeah, so it would infect the game, presumably, but Bob says otherwise, so... What does he know? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've already established this is his first posting. It, yeah, like you had said, I he's not the smartest character on the show, but it's okay. I'm okay with that. It's kind of creepy. There's a creepy, like, echo as everything... Uh, this is actually a pretty harrowing moment. Like, this is sc- kind of scary. Actually, one thing, I wanna, think about- one thing I want to point out is uh, that just made me think, because uh, when you mentioned that about Bob not being the smartest, my first thought was like, but he is the coolest. And what I realized, it got me thinking, was so uh, how we were talking earlier about how uh, Dot is the coolest character in the show. Yeah. Bob is like cool if you're a nine year old. Yes. Dot is cool if you are a 30 plus year old. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? <laughs> yeah. How that, that perspective changes. Yeah. Whereas when like... you're a kid, Bob is easily the coolest and Dot is, oh, whatever, like a uh, responsible adult. But we're watching it now and we're like, oh, man, Dot, Dot is easily the coolest character here. Yeah, man, responsible adult. Look at how successful she is. And like, she's doing it all on her own and she's independent. And wow, that's rad. But it's like when you're nine, it's like, no, the guy with the silver dreads who's all like, <laughs> this is bad, very bad. <laughs> that's well, the he, he, guy. he fights the games and doesn't afraid of anything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I love Reboot. He fights games and doesn't, he fights the users and doesn't afraid of anything. I think Reboot is a pretty cool guy. He fights the user and doesn't afraid of anything. There you go. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I wonder if anyone listening knows that stupid meme format. The Halo is pretty cool guy <laughs> meme. Yeah, he blows up aliens and doesn't afraid of anything. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's like some two thousand what two thousand seven shit. Because I, well, I think I was, I was on four chan at the time, so yeah, I think probably. That... I think that became a meme on 4chan like shortly after Halo 3 came out. So was that it? Yeah. Good old, good old Halo. Uh, me, uh, ancient memes aside. <laughs> <laughs> so they're not safe in here. Yeah. And it kind of shows everyone freaking out and crying. And there's a slow zoom in on the baby as he drops his little guardian doll like his little doll of of bob yeah and it turns to stone and then it cuts to everyone like fong um enzo uh dot and dot's trying to help the baby and they're all frozen with like horrific expressions on their faces like this is (laughs) it's actually scary it goes from everyone yelling and screaming to like complete silence yeah and, and like the shows... lighting's really dim and like kind of yeah. horror movie esque, and like th- I-, I like how more things scare me now as an adult <laughs> than, than when I was a kid watching this. And they they all turn into the everyone is turned into a stone statue, all with just looks of terror on their face. It's yeah, I'm like, what, what, what? holy <laughs> shit! Like, yeah, talk about. I um I must scream and I have no mouth. I have no mouth. Oh yeah, yeah. But I must scream. Yeah. And so, yeah. Speaking of screaming, Bob has his like fists up and like utter defiance, as if he was screaming when he got turned to stone. And it yeah. just zooms out and cuts to commercial and shows mainframe like completely turned to stone. And then and, Bob yeah, breaks and, free. As if he was mid scream, like he just continues like screaming and um all of the like uh stone kind of like shatters off of him. Mm-hmm. And you can hear his voice e- echoing because he's the only one in there as he's like screaming like no. And I'm like, yeah. holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't okay. <laughs> He even has exist existential dread right now. He's like, "You were right, Fong. I guess I am immune. Lucky me." And I'm like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, and he's like, <laughs> he's like standing with his like head hung and his shoulders down, uh, just with a look of utter sorrow, as like Dot and Enzo 
and the the family are all like turned to stone right in front of them. Yeah. And then there's a stone, like there's a frozen Fong who's like straight up reaching for Bob. It's actually quite horrifying. <laughs> like yeah. it does not look like they they went into that black night peacefully. No. And then Bob is like uh let hexadecimal turn my friends into stone and destroy mainframe i don't think so because that's his catchphrase that's his catchphrase so eight-year-old me would have been super fucking hyped <laughs> actually i i'm kind i am kind of hyped he's all like i don't think so and it, it shows hexadecimal's lost angles and her her island's completely unaffected and yet inside her lair she has a bunch of this is creepy bullshit. Yeah, a bunch of binomes and sprites just who have just been frozen by the bug. She has them like all like surrounding her, her uh, throne room her throne. area, like hovering in the air, like trophies. Yeah. What a creepy bitch. And then we see that her little pet dog thingy, her her pet Scuzzy. beach ball, <laughs> Scuzzy. Yeah, even he he turns to stone. And she's uh she's talking to him, looking for some sort like a like the complete like crazy bitch that she is is like looking for him to respond, even though he's frozen. Yeah, she's not okay. And indeed, she's like asking uh, Scuzzy, like, "Oh, does this please you?" And obviously, because he's frozen, he doesn't respond. And she flips out, still doesn't respond, and she just like. This is upsetting her. Like, this is, like I, I feel like this is something that she didn't consider. She goes through all of the emotions. She screams and gets angry. She gets sad. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that she considered that this bug that she developed would leave her completely alone. N- no. <laughs> she did not. It, and it, she's like, oh, what do you think of my collection? And it actually shows one of the binums disintegrate. So presumably that one's just fucking dead now. Yeah. <laughs> Which is scary. So that means it's, Bob's got like a time limit here. And speaking of Bob, he like zip lines in and kicks hexadecimal out of her chair from behind. Like it's straight on. Like he's fighting her. Yeah. I, I like that his command to shoot a zip line was just glitch line. <laughs> yeah, it it knows. It knows. <laughs> like, you imagine if he's like on set and he's like glitch line, and it just like gives him his line of dialogue. That it he just needs. reads him his next line of dialogue. <laughs> it just brings up his script <laughs> on a vid window. <laughs> yeah, on a vid window. Thanks, glitch. Yeah, glitch could be used for all sorts of things. Like, yeah, like whatever he's doing here. So yeah, so he swings in like Spider Man. He does and kicks her in the back right out of her chair. But she stops herself from falling because, I mean, she can levitate, right? Yeah, she just about collides into Scuzzy, but then stops herself at the just at the right time. And she mm-hmm. mentions, she says to Bob, like, oh, uh, how clever trying to infect me with my own Medusa. But it's like, uh, like she's walking on the ground that's been turned to stone. Oh, yeah, I was wondering. I was like, did he try to do that? I I don't think but, he did. But then he does, though, because he tries throwing the uh, Medusa-infected um, uh, Guardian doll that the baby oh, had. Oh, maybe she knows what he's about to do? Yeah, but it's right. like, she seems to be immune to it anyway, though. Yeah, because they're both standing on the ground? Yeah. Which- which implies that they are both immune to it already. And for the listeners, um, during the scene, it, d- it does show the ground. Even though her layer isn't infected, the floor is like that gray stone that Medusa turns everything into when it wasn't before. So, hmm. So it's weird. weird. Yeah. So, he- like, when Bob touched the floor after he kicked her, did that infect her layer? Hmm. I don't know, but yeah, it, it, it's strange that like presumably it presumably she she is immune to it anyway. Yeah, but he's still trying to infect her. He he's it's a strange plan that which wouldn't help the rest of mainframe. It would just get revenge and leave him alone. <laughs> yeah, uh, and he's and, like, well, I guess it's back to the supercomputer for me. 
<laughs> Bye. <laughs> You're like, how was your first post? And he's like, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to make uh, new friends. We, we, you know, we may have had to do a uh, complete uh, hard drive format, zero fill, you know, but uh, yeah, it's uh they'll be fine. They'll be fine. You know, we, all of we, their memories are wiped we, and we, we don't need to talk about that. It's like it never <laughs> happened. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they have kind of a Western duel here where they both have put their hand behind their back and hexadecimal has a fireball forming and Bob just has the little doll. Yeah. But again, she just told Bob, like, this is the problem that you had. She just told Bob that like, she can't be infected. So was he just whipping a <laughs> whipping a rock at her face, essentially? <laughs> she does some creepy shit with the doll. She like levitates it in front of her and like it mimes her her actions and her head tilts. Yeah. And she seems sad and she's like, Aw, immune to my Medusa. How disappointing. Yeah. I'll just have to destroy you the old fashioned way. I just noticed now that sometimes her eyes are black, sometimes her eyes are yellow, sometimes her eyes are red. Yeah, they seem to change color based on her mood. So it's not just the the expression Green. on her, on her yeah. mask. It's also the color of her eyes as well. Yeah, they, her they eyes change. are mood ring. Yeah. yeah, her eyes are mood ring. Exactly. I don't know why he ever thinks she can, like, she's, she's like a, a space, like, wizard, right? So he goes, glitch, and he dodges her, like, really creepy, like, attack. But she just teleports in front of him and grabs, like, force chokes him in the air like he can't beat her so he's got to outwit her yeah and that's exactly what he does also i want to point out that uh so so bob says he's like actually i've come here to thank you and uh yeah she's like and why is that my love so she calls bob my love yeah i yep. wonder as i Stroke what is my it, chin hair. I wonder <laughs> if that's something that might come into play later on. Does I've... Hexadecimal have feelings for Bob? Have they already fucked? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, okay, let's say you're like, you know, you, you've been divorced twice, like Hexadecimal, right? Well, I'm but halfway you... there. <laughs> you sorry let's say hexadecimal has been divorced twice right <laughs> she's she's come out fairly wealthy from each like divorce right she just lives in this tower by herself like you know you, you have urges you have needs and stuff like that who else is she gonna bang her her ex megabyte is like like trash he steals things from her when they hook up and then there, then there's bob you know Bob's like end game material, <laughs> like final, final marriage material. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's the one that keeps getting away. Yep. Both figuratively and literally. I, but, but to comment on what you were saying, like maybe she favors Bob fa favorably. <laughs> um, <laughs> she fancies him. She fancies him. Uh, her willing. I don't know if this is just because she's crazy or gullible but she's willing to hear him hear him out yeah and she's swayed by his by his words like really easily but i mean he has a good point yeah so what what does he say so he tells her that basically uh he wants to thank her because he she has made mainframe so predictable now and she right. is an agent Boring. of chaos yeah, everyone in the same spot, never moving. No more um, battles with Megabyte. Nice and quiet, very peaceful. Yeah, and she's like slowly losing her shit over this. <laughs> yeah, she's like <laughs> changing emotions. There's a teardrop. Her eyes are blue, and she's like peaceful. Oh, it's true. <laughs> no, no. What and she's like, oh, st stop, stop. Yeah. And she, yeah, like you said, she's an agent of chaos, and this, this has been amusing for like an afternoon for her, right? Yeah. And you know what? She was doubting herself already, right? She was like, "Oh, I don't know if this was a good idea, Scuzzy," but then she'd just laugh it off. Yeah. <laughs> no more unexpected turn of events. No. What have I done? No. Just peace and calm, 
forever. <laughs> like Bob's really rubbing, <laughs> rubbing that in, and, and she like, like screams and grabs her head, <laughs> and she's like, "I must stop it all from going so very wrong." And then she fa- her she snaps her fingers, and her face she's got, got like a go to a smirk. smirk. Yeah, she's got like a like a sly smirk, and she just snaps her fingers. A very and mischievous look. There's like a white light, and just poof, all of. Main Everything goes back to normal. And she turns her back to Bob and just walks away. Yep. Oh, Scuzzy's there. Yeah, he, he turns to Scuzzy and he's like, within earshot of Hexadecimal, presumably, he's like, now that is one strange lady. And, and, and Scuzzy, Scuzzy nods. nods. <laughs> yeah. And now it ends it. And there. Yeah, Frisk gets back to normal. So is Enzo. And they're playing. And they're on, uh, they're actually in a real park this time. Not beside the highway <laughs> yeah and bob's just basically like man this has been one productive day i got my car fixed saved mainframe from total destruction <laughs> and most of all enzo and i got you to relax she is cool on that like leopard print blanket chilling with her glasses yeah and uh she basically uh 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 tells bob like thanks, you both deserve a medal for doing that. And Bob's just like, well, I think I'll just settle for a nap. So he puts his head back (laughs) and closes his eyes, and oh shit. Warning. Incoming game. And the sky crackles. And then comically, Frisket, Enzo, Dot, and Bob all like cut, push their head into frame. (laughs) Yeah. With like a look of of surprise, and then the credits. (laughs) Da-da-da-da-da-da-da. It's another one of those very like cartoony moments in this show. They can get away with that a lot on this. But I, I didn't realize you and I have definitely realized, but certain shows have age ranges and I'm not saying one is better than the other. Right. But we also talk about and review beast wars and it yeah. is very apparent that the age, the minimum age for this show is lower than Beast Wars. Like I feel like Beast Wars is twelve plus, whereas Reboot's kind of eight plus. I I would go younger, honestly. I think Reboot is probably probably like five plus, and Beast Wars is like eight plus. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's a little, little, little different themes. Yeah, but at the same time, Reboot is so colorful, and they can get away with so much. And there's there's all this basically like tech magic right it's like a cyberpunk like clark tech kind of world right where mm. technology is indistinguishable from magic <laughs> uh that's the term clark tech um i, I was gonna ask yeah because i'm i'm not familiar with that yeah and reboot uh sorry uh beast wars it feels grounded like it, it breaks its own rules a lot we complain about that on, <laughs> on the show but it does it does feel like the stakes are higher there's more like do you know what i mean like it's almost like it's a little bit more serious there I, there's i'm not describing it right there there is a lot more nuanced drama in that show than there is in this one at least thus far yes thus far yes um, I think the characters are a little more are a little better fleshed out in that show, at least as far as we're into it so far. Um, there's a lot more nuance in the character development, whereas this, uh, thus far, like beyond like computer puns aside, this show is fairly one dimensional so far. Yeah, and it's to grab a broader audience and get you interested in the characters and their. And their adventure, right? Yeah, and it, it does get deeper. And oh, it uh, it absolutely does. It yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. What well, what you were saying before? Um, uh, what's that fiction writer's name? Uh, Arthur C. Clarke. He's a mm. uh, sci-fi writer, famous sci-fi writer. Um, Legendary. The, yeah, the uh, C- Clark Tech is basically. I almost feel like I live. <laughs> I use Clark Tech every day. It's basically, like I said, when technology is almost indistinguishable from from magic, like it it cannot be understood 
or can't isn't understood at all by the the people that use it. Mm. I feel like that about my smartphone. So maybe that's not <laughs> maybe that's I, not even in the realm of sci-fi. I, I feel like that's most people nowadays, honestly. <laughs> But I mean, we understand electricity. We understand our fingers work with static electricity to move, and the screen detects it, right? Like we get the gist of it. It's not complete like voodoo. To you mean well, you mean electricity? Is that like pokey magic? Yes. <laughs> we'll never know. We'll, we'll never know. It's like magnets. How do they work? Uh, all I know of magnets is they are a great way to break into a police station. <laughs> or at least that's what breaking bad taught me i was that's exactly what i was thinking of <laughs> magnets bitch science bitch i i really i i don't use it that much anymore but like i feel like that show captures why it's fun to say certain swear words right it's not that anybody is necessarily worthy of ridicule or whatever some some swear words are just fun to say absolutely yeah. Like ape shit. <laughs> ape shit. <laughs> My Yelling science, favorite. bitch, is a, is a good one. Yeah, so that has... Slag. Been... Slag. <laughs> uh, that has been episode four of Reboot, Medusa Bug. Cal, do you have any final thoughts on the episode? I feel like it's one of the stronger episodes in this beginning run of them. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Yeah. it's It's weird and scary, but sets up the both of the villains too you get a little little bit of everything in this one mm -hmm. yeah I, I would say so far this is the strongest episode of the first season mm -hmm. and you get more of a glimpse at the uh the flaws of the viruses in mainframe mm -hmm. and they have quite clear they're very powerful but they are both they both have different different flaws like megabyte yeah, it, is compl so full of himself and thinks he's so clever that he the idea of anybody beating him seems see, seems like it, impossible to him and it, he he doesn't seem to learn that yeah interestingly enough like um the two like main villains of this show their two like big weaknesses aren't like you know MacGuffins or like you know <laughs> like like superpower like the kind of villains or the kind of weaknesses that super villains would have like oh i'm allergic to kryptonite or things <laughs> like that i'm general zod and kryptonite is a big no-no um no their biggest flaw their biggest weaknesses are personality flaws yeah, like the hexadecimals enemies are themselves yeah hexadecimals biggest weakness i would say is her overall instability and megabyte's biggest weakness is his ego mm-hmm and I think that's pretty bold to that. That's pretty good writing for a kid's show. You know what? Not even a kid's show, like, like TV series in general, like showing the children or the audience watching it, that these people, even though they're very powerful, they, they don't get everything they want um, because they are, they're imperfect or they don't think things through, or they think they're above the law, et cetera. Like you said, ego, right? Like it's it's yeah. internal conflict that always stops them. Yeah, I take back what I said. There is some nuance in the show. Yeah. I'm seeing yeah, it we're now. Analyzing it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what about any any closing statements for, for Medusa Bug? Um, no, I don't think I have anything else to add that we haven't already covered. Yeah, I liked it. All right. If you want to follow me, you can do so at Instagram. I am on Instagram at Christopher Siege. Be sure to, if you're watching, listening to this on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you're listening to this through a podcast feed like Apple Podcasts, please give us a five star rating because it really helps us out. Yeah. And if there's like a little techno babble or there's like a little like Easter egg you think that we didn't like talk about or notice, you can message us and we, We'll, we'll address it on the show because I it, it's really cool. Like I want to know all of the things that the the writers put into it, right? I don't want anything to mm -hmm. be missed. It's like an appreciative appreciative gesture. Absolutely. And if you want to do that, you can send us an email at alphanumericpod, P-O-D, at outlook.com. 
Or you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash alphanumeric podcast. And you can send us a message, me, blah, message there. A message there. <laughs> a message. <laughs> well, you do it better, Cecil. <laughs> uh, I must step outside and have a smoke. <laughs> and on that note, I have been one of your hosts, Christopher Siege. And I am one of your other hosts, NeoCal. And Aiden peaced out, so we're just going to say bye on his behalf. So until next time, game over. Game over. Stay frosty. User wins. <laughs> 789. <laughs> <laughs> Warning. Bye. Bye. Reboot will return after these messages.